Alrighty guys, welcome to tonight's charting session. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Hopefully everybody has been enjoying their weekend. It is Sunday, October 29th. Hopefully everybody had a good weekend, ready to get the week started. So tonight we're going to be kind of going over um, a little bit of Friday. We're going to go over a little bit of Friday's action, talk about what we're, what we're looking at going in on Friday, kind of review the action through there. And then we'll talk about what we're looking at going into the week. Again, a lot of the times these Sunday charting sessions are to kind of get us a refresh with everything to get us going into the week. So any questions that you guys have going into this week or any questions in general, again, feel free to just ask them throughout the session tonight. Again, any trades that you guys want me to review as well from last week, we'll do those as well. So let's just kind of jump in here. So first thing I kind of want to talk about in tonight's session is going over kind of where we are uh, in the market and just kind of do a little bit of a top-down analysis overview. So First of all, I will say just the, just this starting off, going into uh, next week, I will be, again, continuing to be bearish. Um, the reason is, is again, zooming out to a bigger time frame. We've now starting to run that weekly imbalance. We're having a lot of displacement. I think this next week and the next possible week after that is going to be able to see a lot more downside. I do think that we're really going to start to see another expansion candle here. I'm expecting the draw on liquidity on a bigger time frame to start to rebalance into this weekly inefficiency right here. So I'm expecting to see another rollover to the downside. So again, zooming out, what's going to give us a good bias for trading this? Again, waiting for a bigger time frame rejection of an imbalance, some sort of buy side level being swept. And kind of, again, where we are right now, again, you can notice on Friday, we didn't really have great action. We had an inside bar, which again, I don't really like to trade because we, we'd we have no sort of um, liquidity being taken from them. Yesterday, you could see I, I noticed and I told you guys to mark out the consequent encroachment of this wick right here uh, on the four hour. When we have big wicks like this, a lot of the time I said... If we come up to respect this, we'll, a lot of the times we'll just have a manipulation move. But if we end up breaking through this, a lot of the times we'll go hunt for buy side. So again, retouching on what I normally talk to you guys about is understanding why markets move. And markets move again in three reasons, either to hunt liquidity, either to retrace to equilibrium or to rebalance to some sort of inefficiency, right? So in this case right here, we came up, respected consequent encroachment. If I zoom in, you can actually see we just touched it perfectly rejected that really nicely. And then this ended up becoming the manipulation move for this power of three that we actually had formed on Friday. So on Friday going into the morning, my bias going into the morning on Friday was pretty loose. I was bearish again overall just because my external bias was bearish. But going into the morning, I knew that it was probably going to be choppy because we were exactly in the middle of this entire range, right? We weren't really going anywhere. When you kind of get to you know, pick a side when when you see the high and low of the last session and you notice where we are action wise and we're just consolidating at equilibrium, a lot of the times you're not going to be able to get high quality um probability here because you're just forming that accumulation to either have that manipulation move then distribution is is where you want to start to catch the catch the trade, right? So the morning, the first kind of pretty much two and a half two hours, I would guess you say two hours, um, was pretty much all just choppy action. Um I expected, again, this to be the draw on liquidity, these equal lows right here, but we actually ended up coming and barely taking this again. Most of the time, the market would never do this. If we're going to come down here, this is going to get taken before anything. So that tells me, again, unprobable market conditions. And a lot of the times when we talk about recognizing probabilities um, and recognizing efficiency, again, you always, you'll, you'll always hear me say efficiency in price. When price is inefficient, it'll tease liquidity. So when we're looking at you know a chart like this and we can see, hey, in the morning, look, we just we just took out, uh, I think that was London High. Yeah, we just took out London High here in the morning. And we're starting to have displacement up. We're failing to go higher. Notice all this rejection up here. And we get this massive move to the downside with displacement. And we don't go take the low of London as well afterwards. Is telling me that we're teasing liquidity. This is lower probability market conditions. Because, again, the first two hours, hour and a half of market, we literally did not do anything. We were chopping. And I ended up taking, again, this was the, the day that I took a loss. Um, in my, and it was my first red day in like 10 or 11 days or something like that. Um, and it was because of this morning action. And then again, I said, recognize this morning action. This is going to be an area where you will get chopped. I said, step away. You do not want to, again, unfavorable market conditions here. Notice there's no efficiency in price here. If you want to recognize and say, hey, what is the draw on liquidity when I look at this chart? There is no way of understanding what that is because it's we're not going anywhere. It's just straight barcoding on a bigger time frame. So this is when you do not want to touch the market. You want to let it start to settle, figure out what it wants to do, wait for more structure to validate a bias. Because when in the first hour and a half of market where this is what you look at, you should not be trading this, right? Not be trading this whatsoever. So 
Zooming back out, this ended up becoming that power of three. Looking at the 15 minute, we can see that accumulation area, right? Staying inside this range, staying inside this range. We have the manipulation move up to consequent encroachment of that four hour wick. We end up respecting this area, failing to go higher. We get displacement back down. And then this is where we could expect to see that con continuation to the downside. And I, I remember uh, I posted a, a thing on Twitter when we were up here talking about how I was, how was it expecting this move to the downside. So possibly looking to maybe take a trade in the PM. If you were looking to take a trade, there was uh, some, some opportunity here. The only really trade that I would look to take here would be after, after here. So did anybody did anybody end up shorting PM on uh, on Friday on NQ? Yeah, yeah, scout model stayed away. Okay, okay. So so looking if I was to look to take a, some sort of trade here, I wouldn't be taking it before that big displacement. So I I would be looking at this chart. And a lot of the times, I am not going to become confident with this sell side level until we get that bigger time frame displacement, which again, if I zoom out, is this right here. So this to me is really that market structure shift before um, finally starting to sell off. So any trade kind of before this, in my opinion, I wouldn't look to take just because we don't know if consequent encroachment is going to continue to hold or if this is going to become power of three, right? Because we have a massive 15 minute fair value gap here. We could absolutely hold this, you know, continue and then have an, another expansion move. So once that gets ran through, then I have confidence, right? So it's overlapping those things, having as much confidence with the model as I can. So zooming out on a bigger time frame, again, I would wait for this imbalance to get ran through because when this gets ran through, not only is is this showing bullish imbalance is getting disrespected, but when I zoom in, I'm also getting the displacement that I need to see because we don't really have any displacement here through any sort of low. We have a move down, right? This is a nice move here, but we start accumulating. We start consolidating. There's there's no sign here that we want to have a, a move lower. We could absolutely continue this and bounce. But once we get this move right here, then I'm like, okay, finally, we've now broken this 15-minute imbalance, right? This big fair value gap. Where do I expect price to go now? Now that we've gotten displacement and we finally ran that 15-minute imbalance, this gives me confidence that the move up here was that power of three manipulation, right? So I'm expecting this to become power of three, but I'm not actively looking to take a setup until that idea that I have or that bias of being a power of three is actually proven, which is I need to see, you know, uh, an imbalance get ran through. I need to see displacement. I need to see all of these things. I'm not going to guess that that power of three is going to be into play until I actually see it start playing out. And then that's, that's when I can look for an entry, right? So we can see this 15 minute gets ran through. We actually end up using it as an inverse. We come back up to that bigger time frame imbalance, that three minute, we have a three minute, two minute, all that stuff right here. And then we end up selling off again. Any sort of trade looking uh, in this area would have been really nice opportunity to short. If you were looking to scalp, um, anything here would have been, would have been nice targeting these equal lows that we created um, in the AM session. So, or actually in the overnight session. So power of three ended up playing out really nicely. This is this is pretty much a, a textbook power of three on Friday. Um, but again, I didn't really like Friday action. The morning action was was just awful. And then after that, I just stepped away. Uh, any questions on that so far on Fridays, Friday action? Do you need the 15-minute candle to close and disrespect the 15-minute free value gap? Or can a five-minute or one-minute close do this do the same thing um great question so it depends a lot of the time i want to wait to see a close but if i can look on a smaller time frame and see the rejection already i can predict and most likely know that we're going to close below so what i mean by that is when i zoom out to a 15 a 15 minute and i'm looking at this candle right i'm looking at all right we're starting to break through this. You know, we're really breaking through this at this point, but I don't know if we're going to wick up and just somehow hold this imbalance or not. So what I do is if I'm paying attention to this, what, it, what, what does that mean to wick? If I'm looking at a 15 minute candle here and this is a 15 minute and, and we have a big move down and then wick back up on a smaller time frame, that's a move lower and then a move back up, but two, two consecutive different moves. So I zoom in on a smaller time frame and then I just look to see if the candle still rejects or it actually pulls back and starts respecting that that bigger time frame imbalance. So what I mean what I mean by that is when I zoom in here, and I'm looking at a three minute, and I'm like, hey, this is now the 15 minute candle that's starting to play out, right? It's it's, come on, why well, can't this though this whole range right here, all of these candles combined, 
when we get this candle moved down and I end up coming up and say, hey, we have an imbalance here. If I'm bearish, this should hold and we should respect this. I don't have to wait for that 15 minute candle to close. All I need to see is say, hey, are we respecting this or are we running through this? Because guess what? If this gets ran through, I'm pretty confident that it, we're going to at least go to this next high, possibly even new highs if this imbalance gets ran through. But it doesn't. We come up, respect this, and then we end up selling off. But hey, if this ends up getting ran through, this, the, the vision that I then see is, hey, we just came to stop hunt this low here. This then gets ran through acting as inverse could hold and then look to see us hold that bigger time frame 15 minute imbalance. But since we rejected this, then I'm confident with seeing lower. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And, and I guess we had a bearish SMT, too. Uh, when the setup occurs, do you often wait for the first for value gap to be respected in favor of the draw before taking the second for value gap to target? Yes, exactly. A lot of the times I'll take the second trade. Just run lifetime, brother. Quick question. Is there a library section where I can watch and learn regarding SMT, each models, and anything technical analysis related by any chance? Um, I say number one recommendation, of course, is going to be going back onto my YouTube and watching most of the charting set. I have like hundreds of hours worth of content. Um, on my YouTube. So going back, watching those sessions, watching um, the videos that I made throughout, throughout the, the, the months as well. And then also, and there's a lot of other YouTubers as well. Again, of course, watching ICT's concepts and there, there's some other people as well, but I recommend watching, watching those in, in the past sessions that we've done. Crystal clear. All right. So let's talk about kind of what we're looking at going into sort of this week. Um, again, first thing I'm going to say, let's take a look at news that's going to be the biggest the biggest thing um i'm pretty sure it's nfp and fomc this week let me double check monday uh we have no red folder news on monday so again i i will not be trading tomorrow on monday tuesday we have unemployment claims 8 30 consumer confidence 10 pre-market so that should be fine wednesday we got uh pmi jolt at 10 and then, of course, again, FOMC on Wednesday. So, again, guys, be careful this week. It's going to be a big, I'm, I'm going to say this before the week even starts, guys. Be extra careful this week. Extra careful. Okay? Extra careful. I highly, highly suggest playing defense this week, lowering your size. Do not go into this week trying to fucking pass your eval or pass your fucking funded account in a day or two. Trust me, you're going to look for opportunity that's not there this week, and you're most likely going to get chopped. It's going to be hard, right? Now, I guess, and if it's not, that's great. If we come into the weekend, guess what? And, and the market is absolutely amazing. That's great, but we won't know until that happens. But guess what? Look at what's in front of you. Look what's being told. NFP, FOMC, no Red News Monday. All of these things are against what we want to see. So keep just keep that in mind, right? Again, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Lower your size going into the week. Be safe. Play defense. You do not want to get hurt, all right? So I'm just saying that. Thursday, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. pretty chill as well. Nothing really much. We have unemployment claims pre-market, and that's pretty much it. And then Friday, we have um, pretty much just PM or there we go. Oh, yeah, AM news and then PMI 10. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, if the fair value gap gets disrespected and gets stopped out, do you enter on an inverse fair value gap? When entering on fair value gap, do you wait to see how the candle reacts or just enter immediately with the confluences? Hold on. If the fair value gap gets disrespected and gets stopped out, do you enter on an inverse fair value gap? N no. No. Are you saying if my original bias gets... Like, if, if I'm going to look back in here, are you saying... Are you saying if this gets ran through, would I long this? If I enter short right here and I get stopped out and this, we run through this, would I enter long on an inverse here? Is that, is that, is that what your question is? Yes? No, I would not. I would not enter long on an inverse there. Because again, the reason is, is if I'm looking to take shorts here, I, that means it's already existing with an external bias. If this gets ran through... That means I'm playing against whatever my external bias is, and that's a lower quality setup. So the only way that I can take a long is if it's a scout model. But th again, this specific example, it, it, I need, I need, I need more structure. Again, it, it, I can't say it's a specifics thing. It depends on the specific model. 
If I enter short and it gets ran through, I will not just take a long because, again, I don't have confluence for that. The only confluence that I have for taking a long with, with what you're asking me is that a fair value I've got ran through. I need a lot more structure. I need a lot more context. Does that make sense? So no, just because it got ran through does not mean that you should just take the inverse because you need a lot more understanding of price. Uh, I've taken on NQ. I can tell at the time my bias was very unclear. Yes, yeah, exactly. That literally the exact same trade. Yeah. Um, yes, I would not like to take an inverse here. Would not like to take an inverse here. Again, you you have buy side marked out here. You know you shouldn't take this trade. You know you shouldn't take this trade. <laughs> I, I, I trust that I don't need to say much on that. I, I, I think I know, I know that you know. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm a bad boy. No, you're good, bro. So as being patient this week, um, <clears throat> I will only trade with you in your live tradings and learn. Sounds good? Um, if a candle close disrespects a fair value gap only by a point, let's say, or a very little close above, do you still count that as disrespected? No. Disrespected is displacement. We can, we can fully run through an imbalance and still close below. I mean, look at all of the imbalances that we have here. All of these fair value gaps get ran through, but we close, we close right? This ends up going through. We, we fill this entire inefficiency, but still end up rejecting this and holding this. It's the displacement of it. Disrespect of, disrespect of an inefficiency or an imbalance has to do with the displacement through the imbalance. It'll be clear to you if a fair value gap gets ran through because it means that, that there's no hesitation and it is just a straight move. It just runs through it like it's not even there. And we get displacement through that level. Does that make sense? Think this one was better? Yes, this one was great. This is a great trade. Again, the reason why I like this trade, again, <clears throat> actually, let's talk about this. Why do you think this one worked and this one didn't work? Now, technically, these trades are very, very similar because <clears throat> on this one, you have buy side swept. You're looking to take a long, which eh, it's rough. This one, sell side's been taken, but you're still looking to take a short. Eh, rough. But why is this one a lot better? So much, so much better. And why is this one actually a high quality setup? I want to, I want to, I want to give you, I want to give a, a minute to ask, ask yourself that question. There's a couple different things, but there's a, there's one main point. There's one main point. Yep. You guys, you guys got it. So the reason why this is a lower quality setup and the one that this is most likely going to fail is because number one, you have buy side swept. When we have buy side swept on a bigger time frame, we should not be looking along, right? But on this case, you have sell side swept, but you're looking to short. But this actually ends up playing out. Why is this a better setup? Because the higher time frame draw, number one, is lower. You're playing the overall trend. So even if sell side swept, notice this 15 minute for value gap does not get ran through. So the shorts are still valid. You have a, um, you have a 15 minute stop rate. You have an SMT at this high and you get the first imbalance of this bullish imbalance get ran through and then you take whatever that second imbalance is. With this trade, this fair value gap never got ran through as much as you needed to. You're too zoomed. You were too zoomed in here. Too zoomed in. Too zoomed in expecting the bigger time frame imbalance to hold instead of focusing on the overall. Again, you knew that these, I, I knew going into that day too that those equal lows are going to be hunted. For the people that were in the in the Friday live, I told you that we will we will take out this low today. We will. I'm very confident that we'll come down and take these lows today, right? And that's just an understanding of structure. That's just experience. I, I know what where market wants to go most of the time. I don't know when. I need to see a lot of structure beforehand before I am confident looking to take a short here. But I know it's gonna get taken. So when we're all the way up here <clears throat> in a manipulation move, I should not be looking to long up here, right? But with this trade, we now have again. Information being higher time frame draw, information also being rejection of a bigger time frame imbalance, a stop rate and imbalance. This is a high quality setup, even though that bigger time frame sell side was taken. Still a high quality setup. 
because you have exactly what you need. Bigger time frame imbalance, rejection, stop rate or a sweep, an SMT, displacement, and a fair value gap targeting the higher time frame draw, which is what you have. Make sense? <clears throat> Higher time from objective was met, so there's no reason for the fair value gap to hold. Yes, you are correct, but you don't take a short. You're not shorting this. You're not shorting. You're not shorting here. Why? Because you're you're exactly right. If this is a bigger time frame sell side level, you would not short this imbalance because you're expecting this to get ran through. <clears throat> now you do not know if this is going to get ran through. Or you don't know if it's going to reject, and you're going to sweep. So again. That's the difference between trying to predict and play probabilities is wait for this to show you what it wants to do and use that to your advantage. Again, the best way to find what the draw on liquidity is, is not to look for a bunch of fucking models and try to figure out if we're, you know, in a market maker, buy model, market, sale, blah, blah, blah. The easiest way is just to look at what is being respected and what's being disrespected. Hey, we have a bunch of highs here looking at low resistance liquidity run and we have a big 15 minute fair value gap here. If we run through this, I can maybe expect a market structure shift because we swept sell side on a bigger time frame. If we come up and reject this 15 minute fair value gap and we sweep all of these highs and we displace lower, I could expect to go make new lows. That's it. Come up, reject the 15 minute fair value gap. We sweep all of these lows. Again, think about it logically. We have beautiful low resistance liquidity. We have all of these stacked highs here. You have an SMT form at the highs. Just divergence between ES and NQ rejection of a bigger time frame imbalance, displacement all the way back down, big sale up back inside of the range, right? Back inside. It's not up here. You're not, you're not entering, you know, up in the fair value gap. You have displacement way out of this imbalance, right? All the way back down. And then you're taking that short to go, to go see new lows. So yes, should you expect this imbalance to get ran through? Yes. Do you blindly take a short here? No. Can you take a short here after seeing what we've seen here? Yes. Make sense? All right. So let's talk about going into this week here. Kind of my bias. Again, where we are structure-wise and just <clears throat> talking about what I want to see. So first thing I'm going to do is actually draw out um, the weekly opening gap for the week. Which is going to be... Right here. I actually have kind of a fucking big ass gap this week. Oh, I think I clicked the wrong. There we go. Oh, fuck. Wait, why do these look so... Why do these not look like the same color? Am I tripping? Oh, I'm tripping. Okay. They actually... Never mind. They do. Might be my monitor. Okay. So we got new week opening gap on the chart. What I want you guys to focus on here is where we are. Anything here Without this high or this low being taken is lower probability. And that's why I expect Monday to probably continue to sit in this range or have the manipulation move up here to set us up for the move in the rest of the week. So possibly what I'm expecting to see is I will be sitting out Monday and I'll be coming in on Tuesday. And what I want to see on Monday is to continue to form consolidation here to set up for a possibly either a bigger bigger time frame power of three, right? Which could be our accumulation here, manipulation, and then distribution to the downside, which is what I would want to see. But anything in this range is going to be lower probability setup. And this is the difference. Again, everybody asked me, and I'll talk about this too. If you guys struggle with understanding internal versus external liquidity, it all just has to do with the whatever time frame you're looking at. If I'm looking at this right here, <clears throat> what's my external and internal buy side liquidity? My external is this buy side. This is my external because it's the outside of this range. This is my external sell side, right? This would be, you know, my internal buy side or 
in internal cell side, right? Because it's inside of the bigger range that I'm looking at, right? But guess what? If I zoom in or if I zoom out, this is now my internal buy side and sell side ranges. This is my external buy side and sell side range, right? So zooming out, again, is going to give me my bias going into this week is looking at this daily and saying, hey, we have a massive number one, big volume imbalance right here, which is I'm going to mark out actually. We have a big volume imbalance here. Four hour time frame, we still have that opening gap and we have another four hour imbalance that we could possibly come up to here. I don't really expect us to. What I want to see going into this week is I want to see us come up Take out these highs, manipulate it at the highs going into Monday, and then Tuesday we start to reverse, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday we have a, a just continuation of the to the sell off. Make sense? Kind of big gap, so that could signal low probability conditions. It could. A lot of the times when we gap, we need a lot more structure to validate a bias. And that does most of the time affect action because it, we most of the time just consolidate to set up for more structure. Box at the dash. So TradingView recently just added this. If you go to your settings, you can now add, if you go to style, there's a middle line thing now that you can check. Chart colors. Uh, I'll just give you my here. If you guys want my chart, there's the link right there. That should, that should give you the same settings. I think Bet. gap ups and gaps down effect trading for the week. So Gap up and gaps down don't really, again, it depends on how you, how, how you use them. For me, it doesn't do much because it's not affecting how I trade. Um, but what you need to think about is when we do gap, it basically creates an internal range that needs to be filled because there's no structure, right? Now, if I'm, if I'm just looking at this, right? If I, if I'm, if I'm, if I go into the day and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to trade this. What the fuck is this? There's not enough structure here for me to validate a bias, right? Does that make sense? You, you guys will hear me say, I always want more structure. I need more structure. I need more structure. When I say I need more structure, when you guys hear me say that, it means that there's not enough structure currently in the chart to validate a bias, right? Meaning, hey, we don't really have clear buy side. We don't have clear sell side. If this high gets taken, I'm not going to have confidence if, to, for us to sell off because guess what? We gapped up and we have a, a completely new range now that needs to be filled. We need more structure here, right? So that's the kind of thing that with gap ups and gaps down that I look at is I normally wait that I normally don't trade gap ups and gaps down those days because you'll notice a lot of the times, again, days where we gap up or gap down. Hey, guess what? We had a big gap up here. What comes right after? We literally just consolidate here. We're not going anywhere, right? Um, and you'll notice that. So again, going into tomorrow, gap ups and gap ups aren't something you really need to um, focus on or figure out too much. I mean, a lot of the times, the more that you start to recognize them and, you, and the, the more that you start to gain experience with watching the action that comes afterwards is when you'll start to see kind of things start to align and you'll kind of figure out your own ways of navigating them. Yeah, I got you. Um, all right, let me take a look at, I want to just look at, have a quick look at ES uh, and the differences right now. Not really much. Um, I do really like this um, daily imbalance. I want to see us come back to you on ES. Again, what I would want to see here is to see ES come back up into that daily imbalance and form uh, an SMT here with, uh, with NQ. So this is kind of what I would want to see with ES this week is to come up into this daily imbalance, form SMT, and then see lower. And this is, I'm actually, this, this looks like exactly what the market would want to do this week, to be honest. <clears throat> so this is what I'm looking for on ES. Let's take a look at Gold. Do, any, do you guys want me to check anything specifically as well? So gold, again, just swept that buy side level. Looks like we have a low resistance liquidity setting up here. So I would look to start to see displacement to the downside. But we have all of these, these fucking highs here. But again, gold's been super, super bullish here. I think we're probably going to go run to that bigger time frame. 
imbalance. Where was that? Right here. This is where I think that gold's probably going. We have a big weekly fair value up here, though. This is what I would want to see us kind of retrace back to. Uh, can't gaps create resistance for a while before they are broken and then reverse um, when half or completely filled? So the thing with gaps is, yeah, people will use gaps as, you know, resistance or, um, or, or support. And that's actually what we, the, the trade that we took on Thursday, the, the short that we took on Thursday had to do with that, right? Our bias going into the morning was we had a massive gap here, right? Zooming out of the 15 minute, we had a big gap here and I was looking to see this gap um, act as a resistance zone. And a lot of times you'll see that play out. So if you watch gaps like this, they absolutely, you can mark them as a entire zone. So like if I was to mark this, this would be the zone I would be looking for to either number one, fill this gap first or use it as support to possibly see more upside, which then becomes, hey, guess what? This gap becomes then this internal sell side level being taken sweeps and then look to maybe po possibly go back higher, right? But again, that creates a whole new internal range here. So that trade that we took on Friday was exactly that. We came up, rejected that um that big that big gap that we created on Wednesday and then had displacement back out of it to go see again new lows. So yes, if that answers your question. Trade Wednesday? Probably not. Again, I, I I probably won't. I will probably only trade three days this week, guys, if I'm being honest. Again, I know I know it sucks. I really want to be on live with you guys, but you got to recognize when and when not to trade. And this is one of those weeks where I'm just saying, again, going, before we even get into the week, I'm just saying, this week is going to be, I want you guys to focus on defense. I want you guys to focus on defense. I don't want you guys coming to me this week. And I know I'm probably going to see it of a lot of people blowing up evals in the in, in the discord this week i don't want to see it because i want you guys to be extra careful i want you guys to lower your size and i want you to be patient i want you to be disciplined again we're not focused on going into the week being like hey i'm about to make so much money i'm about to pass this eval i'm about to pass all this shit the but the mindset that we're going into this week with is hey we got fomc we got nfp we got um a no news monday i'm gonna say hey guess what most likely Pro rather than not, it's going to be a lower probability market conditions week. It means slower action, not really efficiency in price. Let me lower my size to protect myself from taking more likely losses than it would be if we had better conditions. Okay? That's all I'm saying. If you take a trade in the PM session, do you post it? Uh, before you trade it or not. It depends. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. A lot of the times when I take a trade in PM, I'll be talking in the in the trading chat. So I'll be talking about taking trades and I'll basically be talking about my entire thought process in the in the trading chat when I'm when I'm looking to take a trade in the PM. A lot of the times though, if it's a scalp, like it's a very quick scalp, I won't alert it because if I alert it, people are going to jump in way too late and people are going to end up getting hurt from the trade. And that's why I want to alert it because it's too fast. It's too fast for me to alert. <clears throat> Best time in the PM session to trade uh, after lunch. So 1130. Um, all right. Well, that's my time. I guess 1 130 PM EST is when PM session like really opens up, I guess you could say. All right, guys, that is pretty much all that I have for you guys tonight. Not really too too big of a session tonight, just kind of a light session getting us ready for the week. I'm excited to see what happens on Monday to get us started for, um, see if we have that manipulation move that we want to see. But again, bias going into the week. I'm bearish. I want to see continuation lower, but I do need to see a lot more structure first to validate and um, to finally look to see that expansion move. So I'm looking to see possible move on Monday here to set us up for the rest of the week. Any last questions? What time frames are you favorites including your entry? I'm guessing one is a 15 minute basically what are the I, I use every time frame. Again, price is fractal. It's models inside of models inside of models, so I use every time frame.
overwhelmed if you're overwhelmed with with uh different time frames then stick with few stick with one hour 15 minute five minute During weeks with FOMC and NFP, no trade on Mondays and, and the day before the news, right? Me personally, I don't like to trade the Mondays. Other people, it, they, they like trading NFP Mondays. It, it's all personal preference. Show us your canvas. Like my, my chart settings. Got you. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Get some rest. I will see you guys tomorrow night for the charting session. We'll go over what happens tomorrow for Monday. We'll see what happens throughout the day. Stay safe. If you are going to trade tomorrow, again, I recommend lowering your size. Be patient. Be disciplined. And uh, let's have a great week, everybody. Let's fucking keep killing it. And let's get it. Enjoy the rest of your night, guys. I'll see you then. Peace.